Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and try the problem on your own. So this problem uh, is set up and it tells us that the third term in an arithmetic sequence or arithmetic sequence is 10. So our third term, I'm going to space this out, we have some first term, I'll put here, second term, we don't know it yet, our third term is 10. And the fifth term is 26, so fourth, fifth. Um, if the first term is a sub 1, that's this term right here, which is an equation uh, for the nth term in this sequence? So an arithmetic sequence, or an arithmetic, I think I've heard it pronounced both ways, sequence. What is that? Well, a sequence is just uh, an ordered list of numbers. Ordered list of numbers. And you'll see geometric and arithmetic sequences in um, most, most introductory algebra courses. And when you see arithmetic or arithmetic, that means that there's a constant difference between the numbers. It's constant. Whereas in a geometric sequence, it's not a constant difference. The difference between numbers is growing over time. It's geometric, or you can think of it as exponential in some ways. So here, um, some common examples of a sequence, right, would be one, two, three, four, and so forth, because this is an arithmetic sequence because there's a difference of one between each number. It's constant. Uh, if you had two and then seven, up by five, and then up by five again to 12, and then 17, and so forth, it's also an arithmetic sequence. So how about an arithmetic series? You might see that language as well. Arithmetic or arithmetic series. What's different about this? Well, a series would be a sum of the terms. So you might be asked to think about stuff like 1 plus 2, excuse me, plus 3, plus 4, up to some term uh, that we don't know yet here. It depends on the, se the series, of course. But you can add these numbers. And it's still arithmetic because the difference between each number we're adding is constant. All right, so, so here, lots of formulas and lots of ways to think about this, but let's just um, use our intuition here, right? Here, our third term is 10, and our fifth term is 26. Now, the difference between each step in our sequence has to be constant. So what do I add to, to 10 to get something, and then add the same amount again to get 26? Well, there are two steps here, right? So... If I take 26 and take 10 away from it, I get 16, difference of 16. So what two steps can I take, 16 divided by 2, which is 8, to close that gap? Well, the answer is 8, right? If I add 8 to 10 and get 18, and then add 8 again, 26, it's an arithmetic sequence. Now if I go backwards, I take 8 away, and I get 2. And then I take 8 away again. So 2 minus 8 is negative 6, so we know now that a1 is negative 6, right? So we know a lot about this, this arithmetic sequence already, and we want to know which equation describes this. Well, you might have memorized the way to approach this already, and, but I'm not going to get into that here. I'm going to talk about how to use this intuition that, from what these numbers are to figure this out. We want to know uh, which of these following is an equation for the nth term of the sequence. Well, look at these four choices. Notice how in each of them there's some starting value. Right, and then we're we're adding what's almost like a slope here to our end value each time. So the idea is that if we know, um, let's say a sub one, we know that a sub one needs to equal negative six, right? So in the first choice, a sub one would equal what? Well, instead of n, we put one, so it's eight times one plus ten, which is eighteen. But that's incorrect. A sub 1 can't equal 18. That's not what we have going on here. So we need to find one of these where when you plug in 1, what you have is 18. And where does that happen? Oh, excuse me, not 18, negative 6. And where does that happen? Where do we see that? Where is the only case when we plug in 1, not here, this would give us 26, not here, this would give us negative what? Negative, think about it, 16 minus. 38, I'm struggling with that one, sorry, 22, negative 22. It has to be choice two. Now, if we look at what's happening right here, right, n is 1. If we plug in 1, let's go down here. So a sub n equals 8n minus 14. Now, what we can generalize or think about here, um, 
the basics of the arithmetic sequence can be confirmed by just plugging in what we know. We know a sub 1 needs to equal negative 6, and it does. 8 times 1 minus 14 is negative 6. If we plug in a sub 2, now we said it before, that should give us 2. Let's try it. 8 times 2 minus 14 is 16 minus 14, which is 2. It's working. a sub 3, we plug that in, we get 8 times 3. And minus 14 again. And that gives us what? Well, that gives us 24 minus 14 is 10. And that is the third term in our sequence. So it's working. It gives us the nth term. If we plug in 3, we get the third term. If we plug in 2, we get the second term. If we plug in um, 1, we get the first term, negative 6. So this works. So to get at what's happening here, let's clear up some space. That should do it. Okay. So you might see uh, this formula if you were to look it up, or you might have seen this before in class. This formula, right, would give you the value of the nth term of a sequence. Now, this is kind of an intimidating formula, but let's break it apart. We'll tell what each piece is telling us, um, and then we'll talk about why this formula makes perfect sense. So here, d is the constant difference. In this case, our constant difference was 8, right? We're adding 8 each time, so it's the constant difference. So if you, if you knew this structure, you could say, oh, well, d is 8, so I know I have 8 in my formula. And then a sub 1, if you know what that is, we figured it out in our table, is negative 6. That's our first term in the sequence. So it's negative 6. Plus, what's this n minus 1 bit? So if n is 4, right, here the number 3 would go. Because what this bit is representing n minus 1 is the number of, if you want to think about, jumps from the first term to get to the nth term. I like to call this the number of jumps. Let me explain what that means. Um, so here, if we're looking for the fourth term, that's right here, right? That's the fourth term. To get there, if we're starting at the first term, a sub 1, how many jumps do we need to reach the fourth term? We need one jump, two jumps, and then three jumps. The number of jumps it takes to reach the fourth term is three. In fact, the number of jumps it takes to reach any term is always one less than that term. For example, if I wanted to reach the fifth term, it would take n minus one, or five minus one, four jumps to reach it. So that's why I think of this as a number of jumps. And this, and this process works, um, let me just clear this up and show you. The, if we apply this formula, negative 6 plus 24, right, what does that equal? Well, that equals 18, right? And if we go here, that is our fourth term, 18. Now, if you use this approach, right, in general, it equals negative 6, the, the, the value of the nth term equals negative 6 times n minus 1, times 8, you can simplify this to get the answer in this problem. Negative 6, here you see the distributive property with 8 groups of n and 8 groups of negative 1, negative 8. So a sub n equals 8 times n minus 14, which is exactly what we got. Now there was a lot of discussion there, a lot of things happening. You might want to go back and review some of this. Uh, again, you don't really need to know this formula at all, right? Because what we did was think about it logically here on the table and see what works. But if you have to generate the formula, remember, you can always start with whatever a sub 1 is. And then what you're going to add to it is d, the constant difference. In other words, if you think of jumps, it's the distance of each jump, times n minus 1 jumps if you're looking for the nth term. So start at the first term, add n minus 1 jumps times the distance between each jump. So each jump is that big, d, it's d big. So it's d times n minus one. And I think that that's my way of thinking about it. If it doesn't work for you, let me know. Thanks.